Thank you. Uh, nice to see everybody. So today I would like to talk the update of the OCD. So I just want to talk two things. Number one is current hot topics in terms of the classifying audio. Number two, I'm going to talk the Illuminium 4. So start with this picture. How the pathologist defined the classifying audio. If you look into the inside, there is a small calcium here, small calcium is here, small calcium is here, here. In between, there is a fibri. So even though we say the calcifier nodule, it's actually it's accumulation of small calcium fragments. So each one is actually tiny calcium. That's how it looks like the calcifier nodule. And because of the fibrin, by OCT, there is a strong attenuation. But if you look into inside, you can see the small calcium fragments, and then you can identify that's calcifier nodule. And importantly, look for the non-calcifier nodule site. That's important because those indicating the stent expansion. We ask, what type of the calcifier nodule is bad? That's our original question. To answer that question, we look into like 10,000 OCD. All of them, and we found about 4,000 vessels having the pure and post OCT and de novo region. And my fellow, he took everything. And finally, we found about 230 calcifier nodule about those. Half of them was so-called eruptive calcifier nodule, and half of them was not. And this is a good example. And both eruptive and non-eruptive you can see by angio is radiolucent mass. And here and here, it's quite similar. But by OCT, you can see the irregular surface that's eruptive calcifier nodule. On the other hand, no eruptive one, its surface was covered by fibrous cap. And by the way, the pathologist call this is healed calcifier nodule. So appearance was quite different. After stenting, their behavior is very different as well. This is an eruptive calcifier nodule, and you see like the calcifier nodule is deep protruding through the surface and then making the good round shape of the stent expansion. On the other hand, no eruptive one is stretching the non calcifier nodule site and then pushing the calcifier nodule, and many times the stent area is okay, but round shape, not round shape. That's two different type. And then if we really ask how mechanism of the stent expansion and my fellow, he analyzed before and after of the stenting in terms of the circumference of the calcifier nodule. And if he compare pre and post, when calcifier nodule is eruptive, actually the surface is larger compared to pure, meaning looks like the calcifier nodule, that small fragment, is the redistribution on the top of the stent. On the other hand, non-calcifier node, non-eruptive type is no change. So really, the mechanism of the stent expansion is looks different. And then we ask, what is the predictor of the good stent expansion? Compared to two group, eruptive is better compared to non-eruptive. And Circumference of the calcifier nodule, meaning how big the calcifier nodule, is also important if big is poor stent expansion. And additionally, this is very important. When we look into the calcifier nodule, don't only the calcifier nodule, you have to look for the other side because those are the important place to making the good stretch of the artery. And if you have a big calcium in non calcifier nodule site, such as we call the surrounding calcium, that's indicating the poor stent expansion. And how big the calcium is a sequel thing that's quite important. If the non calcifier nodule site having the same calcium, good chance of the calcium fracture and making the good stent expansion. But if not, it's really indicating the poor stent expansion. Actually, when we are talking the stent expansion in the calcifier node, those is more important than calcifier node itself. And additionally, the negative remodeling at the site of the calcifier node, all of them is indicating the poor stent expansion. However, when we asking the outcome, that was big surprise to me. I didn't expect such a result. 
compared to two group, almost double of the eruptive calcifier nodule compared to the non-eruptive. It was quite surprise. It's really opposite compared to the standard expansion. And this is a case example to make the explanation. This case, you see the very typical radiolucent, and then by OCT, we can say this is irregular surface, no fibrous cap, this is eruptive calcifier nodule. After stenting, we see the nice stent expansion is relatively round shape, but start looking, there is already some reprotrusion of the calcifier nodule. And patient coming back for the staged procedure, the LED, and we found the radiolucent in the right coronary artery, and we did the OCT, and we found this. This is the protrusion of the calcifier nodule. However, we have some doubt. Is this really the calcifier nodule or could be thrombus? And we did dive us and confirm this inside structure is really the calcium. And we decided to put one more stand using the Megatron. We saw that's better to radio, radio force. But again, we had a good stand expansion, but you start seeing the reprotrusion of the calcifier nodule here. Fortunately, this patient did well afterwards, but this type of the recurrent issue is quite often in the eruptive calcifier nodule. This is the overall data. If the red color, like, um, um, dark red color indicating the region had radiolucent mass at the site of the, at the time of the event, and dark blue also, and overall what we see is eruptive one have more event, and also when come back, early come back, more likely radiolucent, indicating reprotrusion of the calcifier nodule. But coming back late, we don't see, that's probably more likely indicating neointima paplasia instead of the uh, reprotrusion. We don't know exactly, but based on the follow-up event angel, that's the best speculation. We ask, what is the important predictor of the future event? Is eruptive compared to the non-eruptive? Additionally, how big the calcifier nodule based on the circumference of the calcifier nodule is important. That may support developing the calcifier nodule, maybe a better outcome, we don't know yet. Additionally, if the calcifier nodule on top of the hinge motion, that's more likely stress and that's also poor outcome. Finally, even though still good stent expansion indicating better stent uh, better outcome. So those are very unique compared to any other region, which recently we done. Additionally, this is one other thing which is important. Uh, whenever you see the calcifier node, it's many times like this. It's radiolucent, but it is quite important. There is a big discrepancy of the actual lumen area by OCT versus angio. This MLD is 0.31 by angio. OCT MLD is actually 1.36. So we overestimating the stenosis if that is radiolucent. Keep in mind. Because when we start treating the calcifier node anyway, they are bad outcome. So if that is not causing the ischemia, not touching from the beginning, could be a good idea. OK, that's my first topic. And second topic is quickly explain the Illuminium 4 and the recent additional data which we presented at the TCT. As you know, the Illuminium 4 including 6, 2,690 patients was randomized, either OCT or IBAS, uh, angio guidance. And two core primary endpoint, number one is acute minimum stent area measured by OCT. Angio arm blinded OCT was performed and we measure all MSA by OCT. And second core primary endpoint is target vessel failure at two years. This is baseline is very similar to other study, except more diabetes, about 40%, and age is 65%, and male is about 80%. In terms of the inclusion criteria, meaning this study, everybody has to have either clinical complex subset or region sub complex region subset, such as medication-treated diabetes as patient-related factor or a region-related complex region subset, such as requiring the longer stent 
more than tw uh, 28 millimeter or the culprit region of either non STEMI or STEMI or angiographic severe calcium or instant stenosis or CTO or bifurcation requiring two stent technique and can be multiple. And that's the inclusion criteria. And you can see how distributed of each uh, complex subset. QCA. Um, only difference between two groups is slightly longer region length in the OCT cohort. This is really by chance. In terms of the procedure, all of the data is really indicating more aggressive PCI in the OCTM, indicating slightly longer stent and slightly larger stent diameter and more post dilatation and larger post dilatation balloon size or pressure is slightly larger. But I think I would emphasize even the angio arm, this is very aggressive treatment, meaning maximum inflation pressure on the angio arm is 18, 18 atmosphere. On the other hand, procedure related factor is a little bit more in the OCT arm. The co-primary first endpoint of the OCT MSA was significantly higher in the OCTM. And the difference is 0 0.36. This is exactly what we estimate. In terms of the other secondary endpoint of the OCT is very consistent by comparing the difference diam uh, area is significantly larger in the OCTM. By looking at entire stent expansion is also similarly OCT is larger and acceptable defined more than 90% of the stent expansion is more frequent in the OCT. In terms of the major dissection defined, this is less frequent in the OCT and major malapportion defined malapportion plus stent and expansion is less frequent by OCT. And post procedure, um, tissue protrusion, large tissue protrusion with um, small lumen area is more frequent, uh, less frequent in the OCT arm, and residual focal stenosis is less frequent in the OCT arm. However, this is, to be honest, to me, is big surprise as, again. And overall, two years target base, uh, vessel failure is actually not significant. However, I would emphasize OCT arm is exactly what to expect. Compared to on the other hand, angio arm is much less compared to what we expect. We define 12%, which is 8%. Other secondary endpoint individual outcome is actually consistently better in the OCT arm, cardiac death, and target vessel MI. And however, this was only the target vessel devascularization was similar in two groups. Stent thrombosis is much, much less in the OCT arm. And out of 23 patients who suffered the stent thrombosis and this myocardial infarction occur at two years is majority of the patient. All individual data is very favorable for the OCT arm except target vessel revascularization. And we ask why? And actually when we compare the before COVID and after the COVID, during the COVID, that's almost exactly what we expect. But during the COVID, it's almost identical. So we expect MI or this patient seek the medication, but if target vessel failure, target vessel revascularization, chest pain, patient may not get the medical treatment. That's one of the explanation of this result as well. I, um, this is a secondary analysis in the Illuminium 4. We ask what kind of OCT parameter to associate it with a feature event. And to answer that question, we include only the patient who had a single region to be able to associate with the outcome and OCT data. That's including 2,100 patients. This is a prior data. What is important OCT characteristic? And that's actually similar in the IBIS. And two important factors, minimum stent area or stent expansion or H issues such as H disease or H dissection. Always those are important to predict the future outcome. That's the data based on the Illumino 4, and we see the exactly same. We define target region failure or cardiac death, ischemic driven tear or stent thrombosis, all important major outcome. What is important predictor by OCT is really stent expansion. Minimum stent area or intrastent flow area, what's meaning same or 
uh, for the stents thrombosis is a ratio, but all together, the stent expansion is always important. Additionally, the proximal edge dissection was also associated. It's quite consistent compared to the previous data. And this is additionally important. X-axis minimum stent area is Y-axis event. And you can see more event after uh, less than four square millimeter. And then I would ask, um, OCDM in this cohort is 5.72 as a medium. Angio arm was 5.36 as a medium. So we are around here. Therefore, unfortunately, the aluminum 4 is really um, not clear. Uh, the MSA difference is somewhere here. So if our difference is somewhere here, we should be able to see the clinical translation. That's one of the explanation why the MSA was significantly different, but cannot translate to the target region, target vessel failure. And finally, just one comment for the October. At the same time, this, uh, this study was also presented. That's including 12, uh, 1,200 patient, and clearly in this cohort, OCT is better, including all patients having the true bifurcation region. Out of those, is 90% was left main bifurcation, and out of these, is 64% had two stent technique. In this study, OCT was performed before PCI after rewiring and final OCT, and optimal stent cr criteria is quite consistent with the aluminum 4 by comparing the difference, et cetera. So I think today I talked to diff completely different topics, but both are quite new. And I would, uh, I'd hope you learn something from this study, uh, explanation. Number one is calcifier nodule. There is a two different type of the calcifier nodule, eruptive or non-eruptive. And compared to non-eruptive, eruptive one having the better stent expansion, but because the reprotrusion of the through the stent, they have poor long-term outcome. Illuminium fall, didn't show the difference of two-year target vessel failure between two groups due to similar rate of the target vessel revascularization. Altogether, Illuminium 4 confirmed the important predictor of the future outcome is really the stent expansion and edge-related issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Akiko. So beautiful, beautiful update on two very topical uh, topics that we just talked about, calcified nodules, aluminum 4. We do have a lot of co-PI and site participating site for aluminum 4. <laughs> we wait for their comments, but we we'll welcome our online faculty to provide their comments. First, Lucio and Christoph, do you have any comments or questions for Akiko before we go to our faculty here? Lucio or Christoph, any comments or questions for Akiko? Sure. Um, good morning, everybody. Great um, to be online and to be part of this uh, vibrant uh, TSIP meeting. Um, Dr. Marar, uh, thanks for the for the great presentation. Uh, I would I would like to to ask and 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 and. Um, Ask you to elaborate on the on the on the first topic on this this um, calcified nodule. What you always encounter during uh, PCI looks very hazy, uh, and we know that is uh, trouble ahead. Um, we see the need to to have a thorough preparation of these calcified nodules, and um, it's great to have these insights from your OCT study on these different eruptive and non eruptive calcified nodules. Do you think that the preparation of these two different types of calcified noodles should be different because of this eruptive character that produces in the in the stent later on? Do you think this to, translates to, to different steps and more thorough preparation? I think so. I think like as I show, non-eruptive type is more hard and they have more trouble to make the good stent expansion. But both having the one important same findings. Calcify nodule occur only the, on top of the severe calcification. And typically at the side of the nodule, there is non, typically no calcium in non-calcified nodule site. 
But if you look into the proximal distal, well, just behind everything, everywhere is a lot of calcium. That's how typically the calcified nodule there. So I think in both category, both type, you really have to entire region, not only the nodule itself, how it looks like non-nodular site, how it looks like the proximal distal. And we show many times what is important prediction of the stent expansion in the calcified region is really total amount of the calcium, not just arc thickness, everything. If you have big, long, large, thick calcium, it's bad. So even though you look for the calcified node, you really look for the other things. And that concept is exactly the same for both. So you really look for the other, it's a sick calcium in non-calcified nodule. Actually, that's actually making more difficult no matter which type. But if other is relatively okay, I think the eruptive looks better than the expansion, at least the baseline. I don't think we need a very um, um, aggressive treatment uh, morphological modification. But I do believe they are more active biology. So we have to think about different things, meaning like we should do more medical therapy such as statin, because when we look into the eruptive type, many times we see the, if we look into by, let's say, Nia's ibis, we see a yellow, or uh, some of them having the necrotic core too. So I think we have to think about what the activi activeness of those that's, I think we have to look for more. In terms of the non eruptive type, it's really like protruding chunk of the calcium. Then, if, especially when you have the non uh, calcium in non eruptive site, we have to think about the bulking or more aggressive modification. Thanks, Akiko. Tom, Thank you. your comments? Uh, Akiko, beautiful presentation. It's Tom Johnson here. The, the data you showed about eruptive nodule and particularly the outcome data being so much poorer for eruptive nodule is clearly a concern for us. We've just had a presentation from Haibo Jaya as well showing this issue that R Renu Vamani demonstrated in terms of the mechanical forces and mobility of the vessel. So do, do you think that failure and the reprotrusion is just a demonstration of mechanical stress, as you say, on the stent, and that perhaps we should just be avoiding stenting these? We, we can prepare and expand the lesion, but then maybe just deploy drug, d deliver drug and avoid metallic scaffold. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion, and we have to look for those options. I really think so. And as I said, the last picture, we really overestimate of the stenosis by angel of the, when there is a calcified nodule. So before treating, number one, you really have to ask, this is really ischemic. Number two, if this is real, and the choice of the non-stent strategy, debulking and drug coating balloon could be tested. I agree. So Akiko, it's Sydney. How are you? Very late in New York. Um, question about Illumin4, there's a slight increase in coronary perforation uh, because the secondary endpoint is 90% stent expansion. And you said that stent expansion is good for outcomes. Uh, is there a risk uh, in the trial if you're aiming for increased stent expansion and complex lesion that you might have an increased risk of perforation? 100% I say no. <laughs> um, I think like the, yeah. I'm not sure how I can say detail, but in some point, I, I would describe what's the mechanism of the perforation. I think the perforation is really, it's not just eliminium for any kind of intervention. We really ask, comparing the proximal distal half and the half, and the proximal half is based on the proximal difference, choose the size of the balloon. Distal half, based on the difference, choose the size of the balloon. And then we really do like the pot for any kind of region. And then let's say big diag. And proximal to the diag, distal to the diag, and especially the LED, there is a trifurcation many times. And then the vessel size is very different. Like distal to the diag is 2.5. Proximal to the diag is actually 3.5. And based on the proximal, decide 3-5 balloon. And then operator think they put the balloon 
proximal to the diet, but a little bit protruding. Those are the causing the perforation. So I, I don't think because of the aggressiveness, no, but if you start meticulously ballooning in such like the tapered artery, and then we are a little bit less careful compared to like the truly port in the bifurcation. So I see this type of the issue. It's not just aluminum um, anywhere. If we start doing the meticulous ballooning based on the each segment sizing. So that's to me is the most important message, which I see some in the aluminum four, but overall, actually slightly, but actually it's not really significant. Thanks. Comment. Hi. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Mehara, for this beautiful presentation. This is Vincenzo Vizzi from Italy. Uh, so in Illumium 4, um, only 40% of patients in the OCT group got an acceptable stent expansion. And this is almost consistent with other trials, with IVOS, for example, in Ultimate trial. Um, your group showed that uh, analyzing different stent expansion criteria uh, maybe the best one would be to consider the ratio between the vessel area and the MSA uh, and also the absolute stent area. Now, my question is, is it time to accept that the relative stent expansion criteria are too difficult to, to be achieved in the real world and uh, we maybe need to move on to absolute stent area criteria? I think we are discussing these things forever. <laughs> I mean, uh, but to me, like Ultimate, IBAS XPL, as you said, and the Illuminium 4, um, optimal criteria is typically like 50%. Why? I think, I don't think that's because of the operator is lazy. I think the region itself is actually just not possible. Uh, for example, the aluminum four, both half and a half has to be more than 90%. And proximal half is compared to the proximal reference. And if you look into the large light corner reality or LED, it is impossible to having more than 90% compared to the proximal reference, not possible. So I think that's really um, not possible criteria, I think. And so, but altogether, what is really important is at least it and then go back to like the almost like the music criteria. Music criteria, if the absolute stent area is more than nine, no matter how it looks like the relative stent expansion is good. And then currently we cannot get the nine, that's different error. But I think as long as you have the absolute stent area is five under 5.5 in the good current generation of the stent, I think most likely good. And then if we go to the small vessel size, and then we have to consider the relative, or we have to consider not put to the stent. And then additionally, even the aluminum four, we work so hard together with the operator, but still to me, the preparation, so let's say the super calcified region is not perfect. And sometimes like instant stenosis already like the inside is very bad, it's almost no, possible to make it better to start with. So I think still the preparation or most importantly, the first time of the best treatment to begin with, that's probably most important. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe I have uh, one last question maybe because of the time. So Dr. Akigo, excellent talk. So uh, for patient with eruptive and non-eruptive uh, calcium nodule, do you identify any clinical factors that may predict which patient is having eruptive versus non-eruptive? Because uh, my gut feeling is I'm doing a lot of uh, renal failure case and I encounter a lot of calcium nodule in renal failure patient. Or maybe eruptive nodule is having a lot of more ACS presentation than the uh, non-SD. This is just my speculation. How about uh, your clinical uh, data uh, showing the uh, which kind of predictors for those uh, patients with having eruptive uh, calcium nodule? I think the ACS is eruptive. And hemodialysis patient is really the predictor of the calcifier nodule. But 
we don't have the data to support the more likely adapted, but think about the hemodialysis patient is coming back again, again, that's calcified nodule development. They are very quick. So I think the, let's say if this calcified nodule appear recently, which not present like three months ago, that's definitely adaptive. So like the newly appear or ACS, that's probably the predictor of the adaptive. So you're probably right, Dr. Chui. So last comment from Dr. Lu from Taiwan. He's also a participating site for Illuminus. So yeah, thanks for a very informative uh, presentation. And uh, we are lucky to be a one of the two center participants in Illumin 4 and uh, uh, in Taiwan. So, but uh, I have to sorry, we contribute one case of the uh, perforation after post-citation. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ad uh, admit it that uh, the 90% expansion rate is uh, sometimes very difficult to uh, achieve. And I have to say that Illumin 4 is very strict, uh, strict uh, randomized control trial. And uh, actually, uh, you have to, you went to participate, you had to receive the well training. And uh, I think uh, the, the, the whole course is actually a training, tra good training pro program. And uh, I, have to, I have to say that the, the, the operator, at least in, at least in the angel, angel group, they do the uh, case especially uh, very similar to the uh, image, image group. Uh, I think they were less than uh, decrease uh, the rate of the uh, improved the feature outcome. So, so uh, before the publication of the final result, uh, we are afraid uh, that uh, the, the two group will, will not show a very great difference because our event is very, very, very low. And I think the COVID, COVID also uh, have very, very great impact because some patient uh, in, in originally, there were bad, some event, but oh, but uh, apparently they died of the COVID. I think they were threatened the survival curve. Is this my comment? Yeah, let's make one more, co one more comment from me. I totally agree. Like that, especially for the Illuminium 4, everybody did super good job. So when I look into, I, I check every case, and then they are really good for the angiom. Like the, they are looking having the already the OCT or IBUS type of the eyes when we look into the angel. So LED proximal, they never put surreal, always they estimate compared to the angel has to be larger enough. That's how, how they do. So definitely control group is too good, but this is how the reality. And I think what is really important is already the OCT or IBUS user is okay because they can do even good angiographic guidance. But really in the world is majority was not using both. So if we really do randomized trial or if we really look into the real world outcome, their procedure without any imaging or any like insight of the IBUS, angio, IBUS OCT eyes to be the angio versus OCT IBUS user, those are the super, super different. So all together, really, the imaging guide make the difference, but that's really we have to translate to other people. That's, I think, the very important.